two, check one, two, check one, two. Pro. Hey, 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 hey. I'm just send this. Real quick. And I promise I'm done. So you've been in the music industry for a while now, and now that you could say you're a matured artist, <laughs> you weren't always doing this, obviously. Yeah. So what were you doing before you were a musician? Well, before I was a musician, I I was in school really. Like I I didn't realize I wanted to do this until I was like um, was getting out of college, you know. So, um, and the really it all these things came together while I was in school, and basically my education ended up being in this. I was like playing a bunch of guitar and studying poetry, and then I started to sing, and it all kind of came together. So it was like as soon as I got out of college, it was like. Everyone's like, well, what are you going to do? You know, that's the question everybody asks each other. And I was like, I think I want to make music. So from that point, it was like just figuring out how to do this. So I was like, uh, you know, I used to, I worked at a, I got a job in a club, uh, the old House of Blues in Boston, which was like the smaller place that was cool, just to see like what happened with music, like how people did shows and what went on with a club. And so I had no idea. So I did that. And I used to substitute teach. I used to teach at like, I, at one point I was teaching at my old high school, and so it was a trip. I was like a substitute teacher walking through the halls of my old high school at like 7 in the morning, and I used to do that, and then I would play at night or work at the club or whatever, and I was hustling. Yeah. Alright, what gave you the uh, initial push to pick up the guitar and start singing? Well, my father gave me a guitar when I was 8, I think, for Christmas, so... I had a guitar, and then, but I would like pick it up, put it down. I never really took it seriously at all, or really practiced or anything. And then when I went away to college, I got like super depressed, and I was away from home for the first time, and I just I hit this like really, like, a lot of turmoil in my life all of a sudden, just inside inner turmoil, and I just like just feeling all this stuff, and the guitar became this like outlet. So all of a sudden, I just all I wanted to do was play guitar, and just like it just the bug bit me, and I and I and I. Just started playing, and then I was writing. I started writing during that time, and really just just pouring stuff out, and then eventually studying poetry. And then I started to sing. Um, my last semester of college, I was in like a college jam band with my friends and stuff, and then I started to sing. And then so it was like singing and writing and guitar kind of all came together. And then like I said, like um, people were like, "What are you gonna do when you graduate?" And I was like think of music like it just all all of these like forces kind of inner in my life kind of felt like they came together what did you get your degree in I, I ended up an English major I went in a chemical engineer and then switched to economics and then I switched to English and I ended up with an English degree which is what I should have been doing I was like in you know chemical engineering like I was I was in the back of chemistry class writing poetry and it was like something's got to give here yeah know? what made you go for chemical engineering I think we were we had a good science program in my high school and, and we were sort of pushed towards engineering really it was kind of it was like hey you get a good job and the world need, needs engineers and at that point you don't know what you want I mean I didn't know what I wanted to do and so I knew I wanted to go to I mean I was just lucky that my my folks sent me to school and paid for it and I, I took out loans but it was like you know I got a college education and but I knew I wanted to go to a uh, university that because I didn't know I knew I didn't really know what I wanted to do so I wanted options so it worked out great because I ended up really studying English and getting into poetry and stuff All right. how many instruments do you play what are your favorite um I play I mean I mainly just play guitar and sing I have I mean I you know I have a banjo I play around on at home I was like thought I would pick up harmonica and stuff like just nothing crazy a piano I'd really like to get a piano and work on it more but anytime I've like gone to work on other instruments I realize like I need to work on guitar yeah <laughs> I need to practice that so I kind of stick to that all right. all right what do you do when you aren't doing music like because you're always running around all the time what do you do? just get the edge yeah. off I mean I and pretty much always playing music, so it's hard to even know what I do besides it. I'm trying to find some balance, you know, but, um, but, uh, no, like, I, I ride my skateboard a little bit, like, I'm not a great skateboarder, but I've been doing it since I was young, so it's like, I cruise around or whatever, or go snowboarding if I can do that or something, but, um, and then I like to just chill out, you know, and I really like reading and writing, and, and, but I'm, I really, I need to find a way to, to get a little distance from music sometimes, I think, or something, because I'm just so focused on sort of doing this all the time, you know, so. Yeah, yeah me too. That's exactly how I am. Yeah. You have to find, you I'm have to. I'm just so, like, 
geared towards something, yeah. and I, I focus on it for, like, months. Yeah. And then I just don't have any hobbies other than that. It's tough. I mean, it's that stuff works in a way, because you get obsessed with something, and it, it's so if you get it done, you get yeah. results. Like, you're doing well, you know, like, but it's, I, you know, I've been on the road the last 15 years, and it's like, hey, man. <laughs> you can keep going. It's fine. Beer. Um, <laughs> no, like, you know, I've been on the road the last 15 years, so it's like that obsession has given me a career. It's sort of like I got shot out of the cannon and I just wanted to, like, you know, just had to play music. Thanks, man. <laughs> uh, um, but it was really like, I, when I look back at it now, I can't even believe the sort of like where the motivation came from or something. It was really like I just got shot out of a cannon and it was like, I need to be on the road making music, and it's just been. Now it's like, okay, I need a home life. I need, like, these other things. You have to take care of yourself. Yeah, okay. Bouncing off that one, I read all about your new album, like, What It Meant and Everything, mm -hmm. and how uh, you spent so long building this career and you forgot about kind of what your home life is like. Mm -hmm. After this, now that the album's out and everything, do you think you're going to go uh, try to find that home life and, like, focus on your own personal life, or do you think you're just going to keep making music because that's what you're focused on, that's what you like to do? Well, it's funny, like, I, I, you know, I put out this record, I was just leaving, which is about, you know, me realizing after all these years, I thought I was building a home life, but it turns out I was just leaving. And in order to promote that record, it's like, I'm still leaving. So it's, I'm just, I, I joke that I'm calling the next record, I'm still leaving, because I'm still like bouncing around like crazy, you know, but it's, but no, I found a space, I found a spot that I that I really like to call home, and I moved up to Vermont and found a space, and I, I at least feel like I'm taking baby steps toward having a home life. I still spend a lot of time alone, and I'm on the road a lot and stuff, but I at least have a space. I'm starting to, like, kind of nest into my thing, and then, you know, eventually find a partner and stuff, and, you know, but it's, um, you know, you learn those lessons hard. It's like, it's like, that's great to, it's fine to sort of, you know, obsessively go after your dream or whatever or you know do your art or whatever it is but it's like you re you really pay the price if you don't sort of like nurture your friendships and your family and things like that and I you know I'm I have a bunch of friends but they're all kind of scattered and I sort of haven't really I realized a few years ago it's like wow I really haven't sort of put in the time and been a great friend and you know so I'm trying to like get better at that and sort of err on the side of like being with people and not just you know it's like you know, I have a career, and music can sustain me and pay my bills now. I'm so lucky to be able to do that and stuff. But it's like, music's not going to, you know, wrap you up in its arms at late at night. and Or it can, metaphorically, I guess. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But you need, like, you need people. Your cover of Fast Car by Tracy Chapman. Yeah. Easily one of your, like, biggest hits. Big definitely. hit, yeah. What made you uh, choose to cover that song, other than all the other songs that you could have covered? Well, it was it was um, covering Fast Car was not my idea. It was Tall Heights' idea. They're they're my buddies who I did it with, and um, you know I saw those guys um, playing an open mic challenge that my buddy runs in, in in Boston a few years ago, and I was a judge at the open mic, and it was like it was like who are you guys, you know? And they're, and now they're touring all over the world. They're touring with Ben Folds right now, and they're just like they're crushing it. But it was their idea. They were like, we think you sound good on Fast Car. And I always knew, like, Tracy Chapman, there was something in my wheelhouse of, like, vocally I could do it. But I just, it almost seemed like, I don't know, too obvious or something. I usually, I usually haven't covered a lot of, like, hits like that, too. I would usually go for more obscure things. But, um, yeah, they just, it was their idea, and we did it, and it's, it's taken off more than anything else I've done. So, yeah. yeah. Thanks, man. <laughs> Now that we got coffee, there's a full pot. <laughs> I'm going to grab some of that in a minute. <laughs> All right. What's your uh, best piece of advice for life and your best piece of advice for people that want to pursue music as a career? Man. Best piece of advice for life, you know. It's like there's so much, you know. I'm a little a little brain dead right now from the road, too, I wonder. But I, I, there, I think there's, some, there's something about... Um, it's almost like the best advice about life is sort of accept death, like accept it, and not to get morbid, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Like I don't, I think enough people we just distract ourselves into thinking like this is gonna be it forever, and it's like it's like this is it, 
you know, and, and so I think when you, if you just can kind of look at things that way, it's like, and you, you start working on your consciousness more and just trying to be conscious and in the moment, all the cliches that everybody says are like really real. So just being present, you know, if I could, you know, when I look back at like all these years so far on the road and stuff, it's like, I, I'm more relaxed now than I used to be about it. I think part of that is because I have the luxury of knowing now, like, okay, I have a career. It's not going to go away. I could really try to screw it up, and it may be more successful or less, but basically I have a career now. When you're out there and just building it, you have no idea. You don't know. So there's like you put all this pressure on yourself, and I definitely did that. And I think the people around me kind of paid the price. Like, I'm very nice to people in general. But, like, I can be really just, like, kind of overbearing, I think, or to the people, some of the people around me, you know. And so, and, you know, so I think, like, if I could give myself advice, it'd be like, dude, like, just lighten up. Like, you're going to be okay. It's going to be okay. There was a guy, my first tour ever, this, like, old hippie dude. Literally, he had seen me play some shows and my friends, and he was a fan of theirs. And he was just a really sweet dude. He would, like, write poems and stuff. He was, like, this hippie dude from Texas wearing a cowboy hat. And he was, like, he just took my face and he was, like, it's okay. And it was, like, I need, really needed to hear that then. And I still think about him now. And it's, like, so, yeah, my advice is it's okay. We're fundamentally okay. We're going to, you know, even now with the sky falling and all the crazy crap going on in the world, it's, like, it's gonna be all right somehow. <laughs> all right, that was good, yeah. Yeah. And uh, what's your best piece of advice for people who want to pursue music as a career? My best advice for people who want to pursue music as a career is that it's a long road. I would treat it that way. You know, I haven't known any other way than sort of like grinding it out on the road, doing it one show at a time, and just keep trying to get better at at you know at making music and. Because that never stops. You know, you never just, like, get to a point where you're like, all right, I know everything now. It's like you have to keep getting better, and you have to love to do it. Otherwise, why would you sort of put yourself through what you have to put yourself through to have a career in music, you know? So I think, like, look at it like it's a long road, you know? And, you know, I've put my whole life into it and kind of paid the price for that in some ways, you know? But it's like, it didn't seem like a choice, you know? It just seemed like what I had to do. So... You know, it, and it always every things always take longer than than you think they're gonna take. You know, when I was when I was first like kind of starting out, it was like Dave Matthews was like huge, and I like Dave Matthews, but I was never like trying to be Dave Matthews or anything. But just the that the fact of his career, I remember hearing at the time that he was 34 when he like when he yeah, made it big. Right. Yeah. Right. Yo. What do you want for Thai food? Do you pad Thai. I told him Pad Thai. Oh, you did? Yeah. Veggie. Oh, was it on? Yeah. yeah. No, you're fine now. Thai. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I always heard, like, it was like, oh, he was 34 when he sort of made it huge. And that seemed so old to me at the time. Like, I'm 40 now. But at the time, I was like, it just gave me this sort of watermark or something. And I was like, all right, sweet. Like, by the time I'm 34, I'm going to be huge. Like, that was just it. Like, you, I think it's, you have to be naive in a certain way, but also you know, just have the drive to go towards something, and I was like, I was like, oh yeah, great, I'll be just world famous by the time I'm 34, so then when I, by the time I was 34, that summer we were in Martin Sexton's band, and he opened for Dave Matthews' band on four dates, so we were the opening band for it, so like in a way, I sort of still got to where he was, but it wasn't by being as big as he was, it was like by working my ass off and just getting, like, sort of peeking my head up through the little, like, peephole and seeing being able to see that big world and then go back to my little playing clubs and stuff, you know, I don't know if that makes sense, but it was like, so it's like, you know, you get there somehow, but it's not the way you think it is, or it, it takes longer in my experience, but if you love it, it's like, you know, it's just, let's just keep doing this, you know? Yeah. All right, last one. What would you like people to know about you? Hmm. What would I like people to know about me? I don't know. I feel like I put a lot of stuff out there, you know, and, um, I mean, I hesitate to say it because I don't usually mix these worlds with, like, my music world, but, um, I'm single. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. So, looking for the mother of my child, what if, no, I don't know, um, no, it's, yeah, so, I don't, I, I don't know, but that gets weird. I don't want to sort of, like, I, I don't want to, like, appeal to, like, play. fans, like, hey, check, you know, <laughs> I don't know. No, I just, I don't even know. Yeah, that's fine. All right. <laughs> that was good.